all ready for a gunfight? Yeah. All right, we're gonna try this again. Are you ready for a gun? Failure! Yeah. A 30-second shootout between lawmen and members of a loosely organized group of outlaws called the Cowboys took place at about 3 p.m. on Wednesday, October 26, 1881, in Tombstone, Arizona. business treating you. Tombstone's a place to be, Doc. It's almost as if the money grows on trees out here. Now, why? You said that same thing about Dodge City. Now, whatever you got yeah, that's planned, different this I... time. I'm through risking my neck. I'm on the up and up. Well, it's true. I've been on my best behavior, Doc. Yeah, at least until the election's over. Isn't that right, Wyatt? You've heard of my intentions. I can already picture. Wyatt or County Sheriff. Hmm. You've not changed at all, Wyatt. There is one thing I need to talk to you about now. By all means, join me inside for a drink. What's on your mind, Wyatt? Ike Glenn's on a warpath. Oh, Ike Glenn's always on a warpath. He's gunning for you, Doc. You know that. Don't concern me. <laughs> Boss. Come on, Ike. We're not going back to the out him. There's more trouble than we need. What I need is another drink. By the looks of you, I could use another one too. Slow down, Clay. I think maybe you've had enough. Had enough. I will tell you what I've had enough. Quit trying to rope me in, Tom. You're buying. I got dead your face. I almost killed you. Mark, dead your dad. Your mama would have been wailing like you was. We're dinner, huh? Boys. We're dinner! How many years have you got this down now? Ten? Fifteen? Well, there's five. More than enough for the likes of you boys. What's that supposed to be? What do you want? Yeah. Yeah. You're in my bar. Come on, now pour up. If it ain't the wonder, not holiday. <laughs> now, Ike, I do believe I've ever only told the truth about you. You're a drunken fool. Oh, we don't need this. Come on. Oh, it's not to worry, Tom. Nothing will come of this. You see, I talks and he talks, but he never seems to quite back up any of those threats. No, sir. He is just a coward. You watch your mouth, Holiday. Don't make me kill you. I'm through with your words, right? You threaten me. You threaten the Earth Boys. I'm sick of hearing. What say we settle this little blood feud here and now? It's fine by me. You know it. Come on, doing? let's just get out of here. Come on! Hey, you can see I ain't rattle a bitch for a gunfight. If I was, that's a doc. Holiday, I'd kill you anyways. Do <laughs> this down in favor, it would be so easy. Right? What? You know, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! I said, clear out of here! You get more fight than you can handle! You're abusing your, your power! Boo! <laughs> Check that gun, Tom. It's your responsibility. Boo! <laughs> well, Morgan? That was fun. <laughs> You got a strange idea of fun, Doc. <laughs> so long, Mr. Earp. I am suddenly bored. Yeah. We're not that scary, honey, at all. Never 
Yay! Yay! Listen to me. Hang back. Hold on to this. Come on. Yeah. Come <laughs> 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 
in that filthy water. started. History books will say 30 shots in 30 seconds. However, I was not counting, therefore neither was you. <laughs> Two months after this gunfight, Virgil Earp was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Virg wandered the west till death found him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky. Wyatt's kid brother Morgan shot in the back and killed, playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19th, 1882. His brother Wyatt's birthday. Now in 1887, the year this whole town began to shake apart, two main causes of this thing died, hundreds of miles apart from each other. That summer, putting together a new gang in northern Arizona, Ike Clanton was shot and killed by a mail order detective. <sighs> Not long after that, a lifetime of drinking and smoking and Tuberculosis caught up with yours truly up in Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> White Earp was the last man standing out of all this. White spent the rest of his days traveling. He went from Idaho to Alaska, finally ending up in Jazz Age Hollywood, looking for another tombstone and a chance to get things right. He never would find it. When he died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday, his last words, oh. Suppose. Suppose. <laughs> and that, folks, is our show. We sure hope you liked it. seated for just a sec, we got a few more things for you. If you would like to come down onto the set, get some pictures with the actors, this is as good as we're going to look all day. <laughs> and if you have any questions behind the history of what you just saw here, come on down and ask. We are a lot more reliable than that dang Val Kilmer movie I keep hearing about. And as you folks exit, you're going to come across a cowboy. He is out there collecting for a charity that is near and dear to all of our hearts here at the OK Corral. That is the Starving Actors Fund. <laughs> Please be generous, folks. Most of those proceeds go towards ramen noodles and much needed acting lessons. Thanks for coming to the OK Corral, folks. Enjoy your day in Tombstone. Okay.